What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I have been playing a ton of the new DLC for Splatoon 2 called the Octo Expansion. This game has always been fantastic, which is why it's actually the most played thing on my entire Nintendo Switch. I've clocked in over 80 hours since launch, so I was very eager to see what this was actually going to be, because already this is an experience that's so well-rounded. But there was always one major drawback to Splatoon 2, which is that the single player was quite lacking. I mean, really, if we're being honest with ourselves here, it seems like the only reason they put any sort of story mode in this game was to try and teach you the controls and different weapons, that way you would jump into the multiplayer and then never go back. Now, I'm okay with that, but it did kind of leave me a little bit aching, wanting a tiny bit more on the single player side. So for this DLC, it's basically just that. It is only single player content, and I think the way it handles itself is quite smart. So so basically, we're now playing as the Octolings, they're kind of like the opposite of the Squid Kids. And this is basically a side story that takes place deep underground of this city. Our little character is somebody we get to make right from scratch here, and he's basically somebody who's waking up with amnesia. He can't remember how he got in this subway, but he does know that he has a single mission, and that's to escape. Doing that though is, well, gonna be pretty hard, because this DLC in general is actually quite brutal. Basically, you are set to try and go through different train tunnels, and the way you do this is by completing puzzle missions. You can choose the route the train goes on, but every single time you try one of these, you basically have to pay a price. This is the most difficult part of this DLC that all around is quite hard, but basically, you are choosing a direction and you're trying to work your way along a path, a series of missions that gets slowly more difficult Difficult, each one having a different focus, some being about boss fights that are a remix from the original game or taking on different enemies. Some require good platforming and others are just about quick aiming to take out targets before they can disappear. Here's the issue with that. Every single time you complete one of these tasks, you're essentially paid in squid bucks, and this lets you go on and buy your way to harder missions, and making it where you can now go a little bit further down the path and maybe try and fight another boss. You are going to need a ton of this cash though, because basically, Every single time you try and attempt one of these missions, you have to pay again. Some of these objectives allow you to have three lives or five lives, but some, which are incredibly tough, only allow you to have a single try and can cost like 500 or 5,000 different in-game bucks. This is so cool because it does motivate you to try really hard and focus on the task, but it definitely has a little bit of a downside, which is that I hate having to continually pay to try the same mission over and over again, because some of them, in my opinion, are downright broken. Now, I will say that 99% are incredibly fun, incredibly well-balanced, and really, really unique, but some are just a test of frustration. So, let me give you an example one that just absolutely melts my brain as to why they put this in here. I'm supposed to carve out a giant poodle. Now, that sounds incredibly silly, and basically it is. So, I have to go along and try and mirror the symbol that's on the left with the boxes on the right. If I make a single mistake, though, and tap even one wrong box, I instantly lose and have to start the entire puzzle over again and pay. I cannot believe that they did stuff like this because it ends up making you feel overly cheapened. It makes it feel like you're being pushed to the limit when you really should be able to kind of sit back and enjoy some of these puzzles. They are designed well, so why do you constantly try and ramp up an artificial sense of tension? To try and give you a way of getting past the missions that you might be stuck on, they did create a shortcut. What really happens here is, if you fail a mission too many times in a row, 
Uh, basically, these characters will come along and go, Hey, it looks like you're sucking. Do you want to just pay to skip it? And you essentially give them the squid bucks that you would have paid to get that mission another try, and now you get to go to the next one. It's something that gives you a nice workaround in case you're completely deadlocked on something that just seems impossible, but I do like that what they do is, instead of giving you the full prize, they give you a silver medal, so to speak. Because each time you do one of these levels, they pay you in squid bucks, and they also give you a memory, which are basically these little marshmallow things. If you pay your way past a mission, they give you a silver medal instead, a not quite as whole memory. This is a smart way of kind of distinguishing what you've actually done and what you've kind of had to cheat your way past. That way, if you do want to go back later on when you've gained better skills and try and do it a little bit more efficiently, you can. You can go back to any of the different routes whenever you want. So as you're going along trying to beat all these different maps, you're slowly unlocking more sections of the underground, making it where you can find new routes, new unlockables, and get the big things you actually are trying to search for, which I won't really talk too much about because there isn't a ton of story here, but I do think that the jokes themselves and the uh, the overall the way they unpack things is quite cute. I love the fact that we're getting to see all these weird people who are stranded in the subway sometimes for years and have now gotten amnesia themselves. So seeing them all get their memory back piece by piece and then kind of just talk about it and sometimes even rap about it is kind of cute. Another aspect of this that I think is kind of ingenious is that there are different difficulty levels in a way. Most missions actually allow you to take different weapons, but they sort of just push you into using the easier ones. So, say you're doing one where you actually have to shoot buttons to try and sneak through a giant moving labyrinth. If you did this with a weapon that's short range, it would be way, way more impossible. So because of it, they will end up paying you a higher percentage at the end, a bigger bonus for a bigger challenge. So if you want, it is possible to try and coast through on the lowest difficulty, always using the recommended guns in the recommended way, and kind of getting through this thing without constantly just tearing your hair out. This is another way that I think is nice, because clearly the entire point of the Octo expansion is to be really, really hard, but fun new stuff. Single player content that's going to try and push you now that you've been playing maybe hundreds of hours of the multiplayer. Something new to make you rethink how you look at Splatoon 2. And in that way it's great. And the fact that they've put in so many different mechanics to let you scale the difficulty up, down, or even skip the things that are kind of frustrating you the most, that's great. This has so many things I do enjoy, despite the fact that I think that some missions are downright broken. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving the Splatoon 2 DLC an 8.5 out of 10. For those who are really curious about how long this would take to fully complete, I think that it would take probably about 20 hours. I got pretty far into it, but I wasn't able to complete all 80 of the new missions, but even still, having gotten the main unlockables down and fought all the bosses, it's hilarious. I'm definitely glad I did it, and it was definitely $20 well spent. Thanks so much for watching gamers, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, but do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well if you click this button you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.